In parts of the world, life expectancy is on the increase, but there are still diseases that confound. Philip Kantoff is a cancer specialist at the Dana-Farber Institute in Boston. Right now, cancer remains one of the leading causes of death in the United States and around the world. People are living longer, but still, it's a challenge to cure people with advanced disease. After numerous preclinical trials, Kantoff is testing a protocol that is radical and highly selective and is being used for the first time on cancer patients. The traditional approach to treating cancer has been with chemotherapy, which are chemicals that are relatively nonspecific in that they kill cancer cells, but they kill normal cells as well. And as a result of that, they cause toxicity or side effects. This was also the challenge facing Omid Farakzad from Harvard Medical School and Professor Robert Langer from MIT. How to design a treatment that would target only rogue cells and spare the healthy ones. If you take the chemotherapy drug docetaxel and if you give that drug in its conventional form, you know, something in the neighborhood of maybe a couple of percent of the drug actually ends up going to the tumor. And, the, and, you know, a huge portion of that administered dose actually goes to other places where it's cause of toxicity. With targeted delivery, you control exactly where you want your drug molecule to go. Dr. Farakzad and his team are encouraged by the results of the early trials. What we are seeing across a range of animal models of cancer is that we are always able to improve the efficacy of a drug compared to the parent drug. And we are almost always able to improve the safety of that in animal models. Given such precise targeting, the team has been able to increase the dosage of the drug without causing any apparent adverse side effects. Only the tumor takes the hit. In the context of a nanoparticle, you can increase the amount of drug at the tumor site by 20-fold. Now, in order to achieve that level of tumor concentration of a chemotherapy drug, you would have to give a very high dose of chemotherapy, which would actually be lethal to a patient. But in the context of a targeted nanoparticle, you get essentially complete tumor eradication. The particles are only tens of nanometers in size, but their sophisticated engineering gives them some unique properties. They're so small that they can roam the body freely as they hunt for the diseased cells. They also contain an anti-cancer drug. The first phase of this structure was resolved some 30 years ago when scientists succeeded in containing the active drug molecule in a plastic nanoparticle. By altering or amending the formula, scientists can also control the size and porosity of the particle and the quantity of the dose. Although the particles can travel the body, they must also outwit that bastion of human health, the immune system. But how? Professor Langer staged an elaborate trick. He attached tiny filaments capable of capturing water molecules to the particles. The camouflaged particle is then able to circulate in the bloodstream for several hours without being detected before finally dissolving. Omid Farakzad took the initiative a step further and added a homing device, ligands that bind to specific receptors that grow only on the membrane of tumor cells. Now the nanoscale drug delivery system can specifically recognize one cell from the other and deliver its payload to the desired cell and to a far lesser degree to a cell that it's not supposed to go to. And once their task is accomplished, the particles are designed to be eliminated naturally. 
the material that we use in the context of uh, designing our nanoparticles have actually been used in, in other medical systems for well over four decades. And these nanoparticles tend to degrade in the body into essentially lactic acid and glycolic acid. And these are molecules that the body uses actually to create energy. The production unit that's building the nanoparticles needed for the clinical tests fits in a single room. It can be run by a team of only three people. There are 10 to the 15 nanoparticles in this vial. We've manufactured these uh, thousands of vials for, for clinical studies in the course of a few days. No special security is required for a facility such as this, simply just controls to assure that we're making uh, reproducibly a safe and sterile product uh, for the treatment of patients. The targeted delivery protocol is the first in the world to enter human clinical trials. So far, the team tells us, there are no signs of toxicity related to their technology. But it's been less than a year since the test began. I think it's very important not to overhype this um, and, and to say that this is a stepwise uh, approach. The animal results are very, very promising. Um, you know, the, what remains to be seen is whether that can be achieved in humans. And it's a, it, is, it is a leap from going from animals to people. Um, so we're, we're hopeful, but we're cautiously optimistic. It is a formidable jump. However, Omid Farakzad believes the basic principles of targeted delivery could revolutionize contemporary medicine and lead to a reappraisal of many other therapies. The real potential of nanotechnology goes far beyond cancer therapy. You can develop far more effective treatments for cardiovascular disease. Um, you can develop much more efficacious vaccines. A few kilometers away, a sister company is hoping to develop nano vaccines. The approach is based on the same principles. Nanoparticles target the cells of the immune system by imitating the shape, size, and molecular signature of natural pathogens. We understand much better the immune system. And what we do is apply the nanotechnology to make mimic synthetic vaccines that are much more potent and that can address different diseases. Well, we've worked in a broad range of diseases with this platform, and these have included infectious diseases like viral diseases, where we uh, have some interesting results in universal flu vaccinations. We've also had some good preliminary results in therapeutic vaccines, uh, both for the applications in cancer and in a different uh, application in autoimmune disease. Early trials confirm that targeted particles can artificially stimulate an organism's natural defenses by teaching it how to respond when a disease attacks. Nanotechnology brings an absolute revolution into the vaccine world. We would not be able to obtain these large immune responses in these different disease areas with this safety, without actually the nanotechnology. We not only have more directed immune response, it actually, in our animal studies, have shown to be safer than conventional types of approaches because we only deliver the active agents to the cells that need them. The first synthetic nanovaccines are about to begin clinical trials and could be available in five to six years. As with other nanotechnologies, the company's minimalist approach could lead to cheaper costs. And that little vessel right there, uh, that holds about 10 to 20,000 vaccine doses. And we can do that and make full commercial scale for worldwide production, maybe in a room that's, you know, 10 meters by five meters in size, roughly. This particular method is very safe. In doing that, it's small, it's contained, uh, it's easily done, uh, and it's using uh, what we call unit operations or uh, technologies that already exist in the pharmaceutical industry and have been out there. Nanoparticle cancer drugs and nano vaccines are just two of the early applications of targeted delivery, but they open up other possibilities. I do believe that the nanotechnology and the concept that we are developing 
should make it able to actually attack most of the diseases that currently have not been able to, to receive treatment. Um, the future will show we will have to do a lot of work to demonstrate that, but the potential of this is clearly there. What we are seeing today is just really a tip of the iceberg. What's underneath is just humongous, almost difficult to imagine today. But what I do know is that the medicine that we're going to be practicing 30, 40, 50 years from now will look nothing like today. Medical futurists foresee the widespread use of cocktails of targeted nanoparticles patrolling the body, programmed to identify and combat disease, a brave new world which promises perfect health and longer lives. Thank you.